verse number one, number two, if you got it, say, I got it. All right, we're going to read from the New Living Translation, and the Bible should read something like this. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. God said, Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Verse number two, so take your son, is what God is telling Abraham, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'm going to show you. For just a few moments this morning, I want to talk to you or really kind of pose a question as our subject for today. The question is, can you pass the test? Can you pass the test? Look at the person closest to you and say, neighbor, I, can you pass the test? Are you ready for the test? You don't look like you're ready. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Y'all said that like y'all ain't, like ain't ready. Hopefully after the day we'll, we'll be a little closer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to say thank you for so much. You've been so good. You watched over us. You cared for us. And, and you just brought us to see another wonderful and beautiful day. We pray today, Lord, that as we open your word, that our eyes are able to see what you want us to see and that our ears are able to hear what it is that you want us to hear. But most importantly, Lord, we pray that our hearts will be open to be shaped into being whatever it is that you would call us to be because we want to be who you want us to be, Lord. We don't want to be selfish and have our own ambition for our own life, but we want our ambitions, our goals to be in line with your will for our life because we know that the power is not in us, but the power is in you. The peace is not in us, but the peace is in you. And so mold us today, shape us through your word today, and allow it to lead us to a better relationship with you. We love you, Lord. We, pr pr we love you, Lord. And we pray today that you have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Amen. Can you, <clears throat> can you pass, pass the test? One of the things that I learned very early, very early in school, is one thing that you can't, can't go through life without is without a test. And all of us, if we have experienced any secular education, we know a little something about tests. We hate tests. In fact, I was one of those ones who, who thought that I couldn't, you really couldn't measure <laughs> whether or not I knew something just by giving me a test. I was the kid who didn't like to do homework, but when you asked me a question, I would give you the right answer, but I didn't like taking tests in school because I didn't think that tests were actually good mechanisms to really gauge where I am on any particular subject. Uh, but little did I know then, and what I have learned and grown to know now, is that life really is full of tests. And, and, and what I couldn't stand back then is something that I appreciate now, is I appreciate that, that what school got me used to doing is school helped me to understand the value of taking tests. And one of the reasons why school helped me understand the value of taking tests, because just like life in school, you can't be promoted to the next grade level without taking a test. You, 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 they, use, they give you tests that, that helps to help you to measure how well you have a grasp on a particular subject or a particular set of subjects within a particular level of grade. And, and they use those, te those tests because they know that if they allow you to move forward to the next level when you haven't really got a good grasp of the test and of the material and of the subject on the level that you're currently on, then they're, they're kind of setting you up for failure by just pushing you along. I, I know I know we don't usually like tests in school, but what I've learned in life is that the test didn't stop in school, but but the tests had continued all throughout my life. And I've seen how God, just like my elementary and high school and middle school teachers would do, they would use these tests to gauge how well I've grasped the subjects or the material on the level that I am. See, even God will give us tests, but God won't allow us to pass to the next level until we're able to pass the test on the level that we're on. Tests are good for us. It's really something that ought to be welcome because it really helps us to see, do we really and truly know how, know or have a grasp of what's happening in this level of our life? 
I know we may not like the test. We don't think it's a good measurement, but truth be told, you really don't know how well you know something until you can pass a test because it's in that test where you encounter some stress and some tension and some frustration. And if you can manage the subject or the material through the stress, and the tension and the frustration and still come out on the other side, then it improves the likelihood that you'll have success on the next level. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get somewhere this morning because tests are necessary and we ought to welcome tests in our life. We ought to welcome tests in our life because we can't move to the next level without a test. Because even God knows he doesn't want to set you up for failure on the next level. And so he will allow you to go through some tests on this level so that you can be set up for success on the next level. Because God doesn't want to waste his investment in your life. He doesn't want to waste the time when he knows you're going to fail because you can't handle what you already have. Lord have mercy. I'm preaching a little bit earlier than I anticipated. But y'all go ahead and stay with me. I ain't talking about you. I'm, I hope it hits you at some point. But I ain't even got to you yet. I'm just talking about tests. And, and how, how God uses tests. And it's no different in this particular passage of Scripture when, when God is talking to Abram, he's Abraham, but he used to be Abram, and we'll get into a little bit more of his story. But here, here clearly the Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 2 that, that sometime later, after God had, had given um, uh, Abraham uh, the promise of his child Isaac. Y'all remember the story. Okay, we was trying to do this in 30 minutes, but if y'all act like y'all, y'all looking like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. So let's say hey, thank you. Say amen. So that's an identifier. I told y'all we are, we, 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 we have to talk back to each other. Amen. 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 And so, so if, you, if you know the story of Abraham, say amen. Okay, all right. Only 50% of you said yes, so let me go to a quick review. Abraham, see, you missed the test already. You just, so I got I to gotta stay where you are. No, no. But Abraham, y'all remember, he was old. Him and his wife was the first test that Abraham had was when he had to leave his father and leave his, the comfort of his own home. And God says, I need you to trust me and go to a place where I'm, where I'm going to show you. I'm not going to tell you what it looks like. I'm not going to tell you how long it's going to take to get there. I'm not going to give you any of that information. I just want you to move on my word. And that's a test. That was Abraham's first test. When he, when he moved, Abraham got old. He got to be about 90, uh, over 100 years old. And his wife, Sarai, at the time was, was about 90 years old. And, and they hadn't had any children, but God had made a promise to Abraham that he was going to multiply his seed and allow his seed to bless all nations. And, and every nation that blessed his seed, they, are, they would also be blessed. And so Abraham knew that in order for that to happen, he had to birth something. But Abraham also knew the facts of his situation, that he was too old and his wife was too old, they don't even get down like that no more because we're past that point in their life. Okay, y'all, y'all miss, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all, okay, y'all gonna barely pass this one. So anyway, um, God promises them and God delivers on his promise. Even though Abraham tried to intervene and mess up with Ishmael, it was all good. It was all good because just because you've made a mistake doesn't always mean that God has canceled the promises that he has over your life. Just because you try to intervene and you mess up from time to time, that's not, that does not mean that it's over for you. In fact, most of the time, we will be recipients of God's grace and God's mercy, and he'll do what he promised anyway. So that's what he does. And so he allows Sarah to birth Isaac. This was the child of the promise, the child that Jesus would eventually come through, the child that God promised them in their old age. And sometime after that, after he was born, the text says that God needed to test Abraham's faith. Now, this is interesting to me because I thought Abraham's faith had already been tested. But here it is. God says sometime later, I still got to test Abraham's faith because Abraham had moved from one level to the next. But clearly, there's a whole other level that God had intended for Abraham. And before he would be promoted to the next level, just like in elementary school, he had to take a test. The test was necessary. God says, I'm going to test Abraham because there's a whole other level that I want Abraham to get to. But if he can't get through this level, if he can't handle it where he is, then he's not ready for where I'm calling him to. 
So I got to test him. I got to test him. What was the test? He says, he says uh, um, go and take your son. But before that, I want you to see that Abraham wasn't afraid of the test. Because when God called him, Abraham, well, here am I, Lord. See, it's one thing for you to get what, you, what God had promised you and then act like you don't hear God no more, you know. You, you, you receive the blessing, then you start sending him the voicemail. You, 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 don't, you do not reply to any of his emails after you got what you initially had prayed for. But the truth be told, what you have is no comparison to what he has still yet for you in your life. And if you choose to snooze on the Lord, boy, that's good. I'm, I'm, this, this is good. If you choose to snooze, on the Lord, then you're going to be missing out on what he has for your future. But Abraham didn't snooze. He didn't, he did not reply. He didn't send him a voicemail. He didn't no reply. He didn't ghost him. But what he did, he says, Lord, here am I. Here am I. What, what, what do you need from me? I know something's about to happen because you only show up when you're trying to do something. So here am I, Lord. And here's what, what Abraham says or what God says. I want you to take the very thing that I've just blessed you with. It's a test. We know it's a test from the beginning, but Abraham just see, hears it as a command. Because God won't always tell you it's a test. Sometimes he'll just give you a command. But oftentimes there's no distinction between God's command and God's testing. That oftentimes the tests are within his command. So he says, listen, the thing that I've blessed you with, I want you to go take it, your son, your only son. Yes, that son that I have given you, I want you to go offer him up as a sacrifice, as a burnt offering. It was a test. It was a test. Take it up to the mountain of Moriah, and I want you to give up your son. Jesus, God says, I'm going to test you. I'm going to test you. Are you willing to give up the thing that I've just blessed you with? It's a test. It's a test. I'm, are you willing to sacrifice the thing that I've given you? It's, it's a test. And, and what I want you to understand about Abraham is Abraham's life really is not that much different than the life of all humanity because none of us can go through life following God at least without and escaping a test. That it's necessary, it's required, it's mandatory for you to move to the next level in your life. You got to be willing to go through the test. So let me give you five quick tests uh, and then I want to give you a few points then, then we'll, we'll, have our, we'll, we'll be able to go home. Five quick tests that we all have to take that are no different from the tests that Abraham had to take. Here they are real quickly. The first test that Abraham or that we have to take, one of the first tips, not any particular order, but the first one I'm going to give you is the weight test. The weight test. Sometimes God is testing you just to see, can you wait? Because, because if you can only serve me when you get what you ask for immediately, I'm not sure if you're really serving me out of, out of sacrifice or if you're serving me out of, out of convenience. So the first test is the wait test. Listen to what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. They that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. That part of our discipleship, part of our following God, part of the tests that we have to make in order to reach the next level in our life is the wait test. Does God have to show up when you call him? Are you only faithful when he's moving now? Or can you be faithful and serve and wait on God? Like just be patient and sit still and don't do nothing. Don't call nobody. Don't talk to nobody. Don't make no move. Don't spend no, no, just wait. When you won't uh, hear a word from God, are you willing to wait? Even if it look like, looks like opportunities are passing you by, are you willing to wait? Even if it looks like everybody else is getting their blessing, are you willing to wait? The first test is the wait test. Sometimes we have to wait because God don't always move, but the old school preacher would say he may not come when you call him, but I promise he'll be there right on time. But if you aren't willing to wait, then you'll miss him. So can you pass the wait test? The second test is the people test. The people test. Can you be faithful when it's just you, or do you need a crew? The people test. Can you be faithful when it's just you, or you, do you need a crew to go with? Do you only show up when everybody else is going to be there? Will you only go if somebody else can go with you? 
will you only do, are you willing to serve God and be faithful even if it's just you? Here's what I've learned. Here's what the Bible teaches us about our faith and our, our, our eternity that even, and, and, and why this test is so important because when we stand before the judgment bar of God, we're going to be standing by ourselves. And oftentimes to get us ready for that ultimate level, God puts us through some tests in our life to see can we be faithful by ourselves. If we're going to go to heaven and give an account by ourselves, before we get to that test, God often wants to know can you be faithful by yourself? When nobody's returning your phone call, will you still show up and do what God has called for you to do? Can you be faithful by yourself? That's one side of the faithful test, but also the other, the people test. The other side of the people test is can you be faithful with some other people? Or is it all about you? Can you move along and get along and make peace with everybody and we can move at a, as a group? Or can you only be involved when it's going your way? Can you survive the people test? Can you only serve when it's your idea? Can you only support when it's your event? Can you only give when it's something that you like? Can you do it with everybody else? Can you work as a team? The people test. Because one of the challenges in, in this world that we live in, it's all about me. It's all about us. And, and some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. But one of the things that we have to understand, we need to know when we have to stand by ourselves. And we also need to know that sometimes we can do more together. Sometimes we're better together. And so sometimes God will put us in a position where we can't get to where we're trying to go without some help. <laughs> Anybody ever been there before where you just can't get it done? You got to have somebody to go with you. You got to have somebody pulling with you. You got to have somebody encouraging you. Sometimes the storm that you go through, you're not going to get through it by yourself. You got to have somebody who can pray for you, who can hold your hand, who can call and just read a scripture to you. Sometimes we got to pass the people test. Are we open enough for God to send us somebody? People test. People test. Let me give you the third one. Um, the strength test. So we got the weight test, the people test. Here's the strength test. The strength test. The strength test. Do you have the strength for where you're trying to go? The strength test. The strength te test. If, it, if first grade math is too hard for you, then you may not try to get a degree in mathematics because that's not an... <laughs> That's not an area where you're strong in. But if mathematics is what you want, then you need to have the discipline to develop some strength, Lord have mercy, in the areas where you're weak. Notice I didn't say if you are weak in math, don't go for math. What I'm saying is if math is what you want, then, then develop the discipline to build strength so you can pass the test to get what it is that you want. Lord, I'm helping somebody in here because sometimes we give up on stuff way too soon. And if we would just implement some discipline, some, some exercise, not just physically, but spiritually and mentally, we would get past more stuff in our life if we would learn to pass the strength test. Because here's what happens, our ambitions are on one level, but our strength is on a whole nother level. And we get mad at God because he won't promote us to this level, and God is saying, if I promote you to this level, you'll crush under the pressure because you're not strong enough yet. How about you be faithful over a few things, be disciplined where you are, obtain strength. Okay, the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 6 and 10, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let God's power build your strength where you are. And one of the challenges of passing the strength test is we try to pass, we try to gain the strength on our own. But what Paul says in Ephesians is that our strength comes from the Lord. Here's what that looks like. We start to attack issues and problems in our life. We don't get strong by facing them with our own strength and might. We get strong when we learn that we can face anything with the Lord have mercy, with the strength and the might of God. So you thought I was talking about your strength test, but the true strength is your ability to 
resist intervening when, Lord have mercy, when God is working. When even when it doesn't look like it's going to pan out, strength says, I'm not going to step in because God can see some stuff that I don't see. And it takes strength for me to trust God even when it don't look like it. Trust God when my money's running low. Trust, that's the strength. That's the strength, not in yourself, because truth be told, we would have failed at our own strength a long time ago. But for where I'm trying to go, I know I can't make it there by myself. And so I'm constantly trying to develop not strength in myself, but I'm trying to develop strength in the Lord. I'm trying to develop more dependency upon him because his strength can overcome anything that I'm going through. So, so the strength test. Let me give you the fourth one. Uh, is this good for anybody? Okay, all right, thank you. Number four, um, can you pass the pain test? The pain test. If I recommend a book, I promise you, it's a book that you want to read. I didn't like reading books when I was a kid, but I love reading them now, uh, especially with, with Audible. Amen. Audio books. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. I can read while I'm driving. Amen. But catch, get this one as soon as you can. It's a book by Dr. Sam Chan. Uh, it's called Who's Holding Your Ladder? Who's Holding Your Ladder by Dr. Sam Chan. And, and one of the main principles early that he, he uh, talks about in this book is this strength, is this a uh, pain test. He calls it a pain threshold. What he says is that your leadership, your maturity, your growth, your next level will be directly correlated to the amount of pain that you can have and still keep moving. Lord have mercy. It's called a pain threshold. It's the pain test. Do you have to be feeling good for you to take the next step? The pain test. Can you move when you're hurting? Can you, can you move when you're sore? Can you move when you're tired? How much pain can you endure? If you really are serious about going to the next level, and you might not be, I don't know, but I am. And so here's what I'm asking God. Help me to develop a, a high pain threshold, a high pain tolerance. It's kind of like most of some of us who, you know, football season is cranking up. I know everybody's excited about basketball season, free agency, whatever. Football season is on its way. I'm about sick of the free agency, all of that other stuff. Let's just get to the y'all, y'all ain't playing for another five, six months. Amen. Football season is on its way. And uh, I remember playing football when I was growing up. And, um, uh, and, and, and I never wanted to come out of the game. And, and the reason I never wanted to come out of the game, because when I was playing peewee football, um, I had to stay in the game, not because I wanted to, but because we didn't have a whole lot of players. And so what would happen is, is when I would feel any type of ache or pain, uh, I, would, I would throw my hand up and say, Coach, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. He would get me to the sideline. I would limp over to the sideline, and he asked me this question. He says, are you hurt or are you injured? Because if you're hurt, then, then just suck up the pain and keep moving forward. But if you're injured, then there's something physically that will prevent you from moving forward. Lord have mercy, this is good. And so sometimes we gotta determine, are we really hurt? Are our feelings hurt? Did somebody not speak to us right? Did somebody not choose us first? Did, are we hurt? And can, if we can handle a little bit of hurt, God says you can survive the pain test. Some of us claim to be injured because they didn't sing the song that I wanted them to sing. Because I didn't get the promotion. The, 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 the devil is a lie. You're not hurt. You're injured. Or not injured, you're hurt. And if you can handle some pain, it'll determine how high you can go. Don't ask for a promotion if you can't handle no pain. Please, because here's what happens. When you get it, you'll be complaining two weeks later. Mm. <laughs> Listen to what James says. Um, Listen to what James says in James chapter 1, verse number 2. Consider it, consider it, consider it pure joy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you encounter trials and tests. Let all oh, Lord have mercy. James got a, got a secret for us today. He says the way you've been looking at pain and tests, you've been looking at it the wrong way. You've been looking at it as a sign that things aren't going well. You've been looking at it as a sign that it's not going to work. You've been looking at it as a sign that you're moving in the wrong direction. And what James says is that we are to have pure joy when the tests come. When the pain shows up, Terrence, he says you are to rejoice, the King James says, or to have pure joy. I can't express that enough. 
pure joy, not happiness, because happiness is determined by what's, what's happening. That's when, when it's not going my way, that, that, is, that is how my emotions are dictated by what's happening. I'm, I'm happy when things are going well. I'm upset and frustrated when things are not going well. Well, what James says, that, that you ought to get a sneaky suspicion that God is up to something when trials come your way. That's not the time to get upset and run. That's the time to get your feet planted in where God has you because something is about to pop off in your life because you experience the pain, the test pain. And if you can pass the pain test, Lord have mercy. Let me give you this last one. It is um, the success test. The success test. If you can pass the pain test, can you pass the opposite or the success test? Can you handle being successful? Can you pass the success test? Can you handle being successful? Does the success draw you closer to God or does it pull you further away? Can you handle the success test? Because here's what I've learned that rain, the Bible teaches us that rain falls on the just <laughs> and the unjust. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. Here's what I've learned through the scripture is that the devil got some power too. And sometimes he will give you a false sense of success because he knows that if, that if you have the success, it will take your eyes off of God. And what the devil don't know is, is I knew from the jump that my success didn't come from him, but it came from God. And what he didn't know is I'm determined to serve God whether I got it together today or not. So my success doesn't determine who I serve because the Bible says we can't serve God and mammon. We can't serve two masters. We're either going to love one and hate the other. And here's what I'm trying to get us to see. If we begin to worship our success over the God that gave us the success, then we have failed the success test. The success test. Are we worshiping the success or the one who gave it to us? Because if he gives us success and the devil takes today and the devil takes it tomorrow, he can give it back to us on Wednesday. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> may, may, okay, may, keep on living. You'll see it. You'll see it. They'll set a trap for you on Monday and you get a new job opportunity on Tuesday. You, you, you'll see it. You, 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 you'll have a bad month on, in January, but God will show up in a mighty way in February. You, you'll see it. You'll see it, the light get cut off, Lord have mercy, on Wednesday, but you make it through the weekend and show sure enough, something happens, some check comes through the mail, and God gives you that success. You, you'll see it. Just keep living, and, and the test will come. Will you pass the success test? Will you serve the success, or will you continue to serve the God who gave it to you? So we all have to take these, these tests, and Lord have mercy, I'm so far over, but give me five more minutes, and I promise I'll, I'll be done. There, there, there's something that God is trying to do when he's giving us these tests. Just like with Abraham, there was, there was a whole other level that God was trying to get Abraham to because he didn't want Abraham. What he was testing was whether or not Abraham loved the thing that he blessed him with more than he loved him. And that's, 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 that's the test, especially, you know, you know, God asked for that thing. You know, we all got that thing. God asked, now he, God asked him for that thing to nail it on, the, to, 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 to put it on an altar and to kill it. But before that, God, he says it was a test. For, for Abraham, it was a command. But to God, it was a test. Y'all, y'all missing. For Abraham, it was a command. But for God, it was a test. God, ne- Lord have mercy, God never had any intentions on taking his son from him. <laughs> Ooh, y'all, y'all miss it. Y'all get it on the, on the way home. God never intended on taking Isaac because that would require God to go back on his word. But God wanted to know, do you, Lord have mercy, when you hear it as a command, do you trust me wherever it comes from? 
because God knows he will never put more on you than you can bear. You, he knows what you can and cannot do without. That's why he knows it as a test. And you got to see every command, every call, every pull, pull, every nudge that you feel in the deep corridors of your heart as a command, as a test from God. God, I'm going to do it because I know that the place that I get where you know I can't handle, that's when you'll step in and provide a ram in the bush. I thought y'all knew the last part of the story, that it was never, it was never, I'm going to destroy you with this test. I just want to see where your love really is. Let me give you these four things real quickly. Uh, number one, the first thing um, that tests do, tests throughout life can teach us to think clearly and consistently trust in God. It's going to teach us to think clearly and to consistently trust in God because when you're going through a test, it'll teach you how, how, to, um, how to focus on what's really important and how to focus on God. The real test will teach you that nothing else matters but the power of God right now. I've done everything that I could, and it still ain't working. So at this point in the test, I'm going to have to trust in God. That was a good place for you to say amen. Thank you. All right. That was good. Okay. It'll teach us to think clearly and to consistently trust in God. Number two, tests are uh, intended to make us, not to break us. Please understand the hell that you're going through right now. You got to change how you see it. You got you to change your perspective. And sometimes the only way you can get a change of perspective is, is to begin to see things the way that God sees things. You got to change your perspective because the tests are not intended to break you. They're intended to make you. God uses them as, 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 as okay, listen to what, what James says in the book of James also in chapter 1. He, said, he talks about us being tried through fire. And in essence, he's saying that, that most, most, the most precious um, uh, gems and minerals in the world, before they get around your neck or around your finger on, or on some jewelry, they all have to go through fire. But the fire is never designed to consume it is heated up just to the level of heat that will not burn uh, uh, or, or consume um, the gem or the jewel or the gold or the, or the rock, but, but to burn everything that's unnecessary everything that would cause it to lose its value. Lord have mercy. Everything that would hold it back. Everything so that when God gets ready to put you on the shelf, people won't doubt your value. They won't doubt your quality. They won't doubt you at all because you've been through the fire. So you can't see the fire as, as something negative to break you, but it's meant to shape you. Not only does it get the ugly stuff off of you or the stuff that does, it's not going to help you. The people that aren't going to help you when you go, that's the best way to know who, you, who really with you. Who, you go through some stuff and have to borrow some money. Then you'll know who really, who really got your back. Go through some stuff and you just need them to come and pray. We ain't going to drink today. We're not going to smoke today. We're not going to have sex today. No, we're just going to come over to the house and we're going to pray and talk to Jesus about our problem, you really going to know who you got. It's through the fire that God tests us and get those waste and that nasty stuff because one day he's going to present us and he says, when I present you, you're going to be faultless. Lord have mercy, this is good. The other thing that the fire does is it's heated up enough to, uh, to mold you. Because I was watching this video on Facebook the other day, and this guy paid like $1,500 to find um, for uh, some dirt from Arizona, something like that. And what they do is they, they buy it and have it delivered, and supposedly there's, there's, you, can, you can get gold out of, uh, out, of, out of the dirt. You know, you sifting for gold. And, and he didn't find as much gold as he thought, but, but something that, that, that struck me, gold don't look nothing like I thought it did when it's mined. It's all crinkly and, and dirty, and uh, got some of it has sharp edges, and it's like folded. It's not. It's nothing like like what you would like what we've seen. And and in fact, when it's in that state, it's only usable for one person. And that's the person who's going to send it through the fire. Because if they brought that to K Jewelers, 
or, or brought it to whatever jewelry store that you go to and just sat that dirty, nasty, um, wrinkled gold on the table, you'd be like, eh, I don't think I want that. I can't do nothing. I can't wear it. I can't. It's not usable. Lord have mercy. It ain't usable. It's only used when it's been under enough fire that, that it, can, it will melt down and lose all of the current structure that it has, and then it is remolded and shaped to be what the designer, Lord have mercy, wants it to be. And don't you know that when we're going through, God is just trying to mold us and he's trying to shape us. One of the words that just trips me out when I, 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 it has always messed me up. You got to be careful for people who say, I just am who I am. I'm just going to be who I am. No, the devil is a lie. God will send you through enough fire so that he can mold you and shape you into who he wants you to be. Because I promise you that God don't want you to have the mouth that you had all your life. He don't want you to have the nasty attitude all the time. He wants you to... Okay, he, he wants to mold you. He wants to mold you. Not to break you, but to mold you. Um, let me hurry up because I know, I know y'all ready to go home. Let me give you the third one. Testing brings out um, our real priorities out into the open. And this is a tough one. This is a tough one because testing brings out our real priorities. You really get to know where your priorities are when you're under the gun, when you're tested. And here's, here's don't answer this, but what do you do when you're really under the gun? It, don't, don't answer that out loud. This is a take-home test right here. Take this home and write it down. I, I wouldn't even advise tell your wife about this one because you might have to get it together. She may not be ready to hear what you really do when things are falling apart. This is between you and the Lord, but here's what I want you to do because test is going to show us where our real priorities are. And I'm not here to beat you down, but because I, because I know that, that, that many times our priorities are not in order. Lord have mercy. It's okay. Don't say amen. Just, just, just me and you right here. They good as long as the bills are paid. Amen. Our priorities look like they in order as long as the bills are paid. But when we don't have but $20 left and we don't know where we're getting the next one, what do we do? What do we do when we're really going through a test? That's going to show us where our priorities are. Because what we do is where our priorities are. Well, here's, here's the test. The test is not just about what you do. The test is going to be what do you do when you realize that that priority is not in the right place. That's the test. The test isn't always the answers that you put down. It's when they give a makeup quiz. And you realize last time I went through that, I didn't have the right priorities. Lord have mercy. This is God, God, God gives makeup quizzes every day of our life. And sometimes, listen, you mad because you've been going through the same stuff year after year. You're in the same spot, in the same spot. You're not going to graduate to the next level till you pass the test. But thanks be to God that he didn't just fail you and you're a failure for the rest of your life because you didn't pass this one. But every year he gives you another chance. He gives you another chance, a makeup quiz, a makeup quiz, a makeup quiz. And here's the beauty of it. When you pass it, whether it take you one time, two times, or ten times, when you pass it, he has no problem, no problem promoting you to the next level. That's good for somebody right there because some of us have been failing. We've been choosing the wrong man, the wrong woman, time after time after time. We've been, we've been doing this. We've been doing that time after time. But here's what I know. When you get it together, when you pass, you're not going to move till you pass the test. You can make twice as much money, but if you don't pass the money test, you're going to have the same problems year after year. But when you pass the test, God will do more with a little than he will, than you can with a whole lot. Let me give you the last one. Last one, passing the test. We talked about it. It releases you to the next level. That our entryway to being everything that God has for us to be is when we're passing these tests. Listen to what James says in James chapter 1 and verse number 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, who perseveres under tests. For once he's been approved, or once he passed the test, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. That when we pass the test, 
there's a promise waiting on the other side. But if you're afraid to even take the test, if you keep failing the test because you just don't want to study, you just don't want to build no strength, you just don't want to wait, you just don't want to work with nobody, you just, you just don't like to do things you just don't like to do. If you can't pass none of those tests, then please don't complain about being stuck where you are. I mean, you can. We're gonna, you know what? Let me take that back. You can complain because we're the type of church, we're going we're gonna to pray for you. We're going to keep inviting you in. We're going to love on you. And not to condone your bad behavior, but we just want to be here to help you so when you do pass the test, we want to help you pass the test. We want to give you what you need to pass the test. We're going to love on you. We, 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 when the test comes up, we're not going to be the church that you can't get a hold of. No, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna find some way to get some help your way because it's just as important for us that you pass the test that we hope that it is for you to pass this test. And here's what you don't want. You don't want other people wanting you to be successful more than you want to be successful yourself. This is a church that wants to help you pass the test. Because even if money is not the answer, even if a relationship is not the reward, can I tell you there's no greater reward than the promise of, have, of heaven being your home, the promise of eternal life. And that's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate reward of passing the test that God gives us in life, is that if we can endure to the end, blessed is the man who perseveres. Because once God gives him that approval, then he'll receive his crown. Is there anybody here who wants a crown of life this morning? We got to be willing to pass the test. And the test can come in many different shapes, sizes, and forms. Your test may be totally different than mine, but we all have tests. And we all fail some, but thank God for the retake and the makeup. And we all pass some. But please understand that no matter where you are in life, there's going to be a test in order for you to move to the next level. And that test is not a sign that you're in the wrong direction. It's not a sign that the marriage ain't working. Did y'all just hear what I just said? A test is not a sign that the marriage ain't working. A test is not the sign that this ain't the job for you. A test is, that's not always what the test is. A test is a sign that there's a promotion coming in your direction that you're almost ready for if you can just pass this test. Is that good for everybody?